two, one. We have ignition. And that was the moment a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket lifted off from Florida's Cape Canaveral. It carried a secret payload for the U.S. Space Force into orbit for a national security mission. Tuesday's launch also marked the 100th national security mission carried out by the ULA. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins me now for more. Bill, the Atlas V launched its last, last national security mission on Tuesday. The Builder United Launch Alliance already has retired uh, its Delta IV family of rockets and is flying out the remaining inventory. Um, how's that all going, that process? Well, it's going very well, John. You know, as you saw, the Atlas V chalked up another uh, flawless flight today. They have 15 more of these rockets in the inventory. Uh, six of them are going to be used to carry Boeing Starliner spacecraft up to the space station through the end of the station's life. And the others are launching uh, the Kuiper uh, Internet satellites, you know, the Amazon uh, version of Starlink that SpaceX is launching. Those are going to start flying pretty soon. Uh, and so the Atlas has a full schedule. Now, what the company, United Launch Alliance, is doing is they're transitioning to a brand new rocket called the Vulcan that really combines all the good points of the Deltas and the Atlases, uh, but it costs less, uh, it's very powerful, uh, and that's the rocket that United Launch Alliance sees as their future uh, with these big national security payloads uh, and commercial payloads as well. So all of that's proceeding. The Vulcan had their first test flight back in January. Uh, they have another one coming up here in a couple of months, and then they're going to be certified to carry uh, military payloads, and that'll get going hopefully next year. So you mentioned the Starliner. Um, what's the latest on the Boeing Starliner? Well, as you know, they've been up there way longer than the eight to 10 days they originally planned, uh, virtually uh, almost two months by now, because they had some thruster issues. And as you know, uh, they had helium leaks that they weren't expecting once they were rendezvousing with the space station. Uh, they just recently test fired all the thrusters. They all worked perfectly. Uh, the known helium leaks, they haven't gotten any worse and they have more than enough helium uh, to get back to Earth. The helium is what pressurizes their propulsion system. Uh, so I think they're increasingly confident uh, that they can safely bring home the commander, Butch Wilmore, and his co-pilot, Sonny Williams. Uh, we would expect that probably in early August. There's a big meeting at the end of this week to discuss all that, see where things stand, and to, and to get some consensus on what to do next. But I'm increasingly uh, pretty confident they're going to come home on the Starliner, and I think everything will be just fine. Quite a layover for them. Uh, NASA also launches astronauts on the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsules atop uh, Falcon 9 rockets. Um, they had a recent launch failure. What caused that failure, and will NASA be able to launch, it, launch its next a space station crew uh, on a Falcon 9 on August 8th, as they originally had planned? Uh, yeah, that flight, August 18th, John, is when they were targeting that mission. Uh, you're right. The, the failure they had back on July 11th was an oxygen leak, a liquid oxygen leak. Uh, in the engine plumbing of the Falcon 9's second stage, uh, SpaceX uh, implemented a quick uh, uh, investigation. The Federal Aviation Administration and NASA participated in that, and I think they're good to go. They resumed flights this past weekend with three flawless missions. Bill Harwood, always a delight to talk to you. Thank you so much, Bill.